Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and by now you've probably seen a whole bunch of videos on the new Note 20 Ultra. Uh, I posted my hands on a couple days ago, and now everyone's showing off their unboxing videos. I too have a box, uh, but I've been using this for the past couple of days now. I have switched to it. I know it's the YouTuber cliche, but I reckon the Note 20 Ultra will become my new daily driver. I hate that phrase, but we're going with it. So let's start with the box because people do love a good unboxing video. And I'll keep this nice and simple. In the box, you get the 25 watt charger. It now supports a maximum 25 watts. The S20 series actually supported 45 watts, so you had to buy an optional, I think, 50 pounds charger, and it actually didn't make that much difference in real life. Along with 15 watt wireless charging and also 4.5 watt reverse wireless charging. So the plug, and and the USB-C to USB-C cable, and a pair of AKG earphones. USB-C, obviously, because there is no headphone jack on the Note 20 Ultra, we didn't expect it, but I know for some people uh, that's still a sore point because the Note 9 had it. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what you get in the box. I'm not sure why people need to do full unboxing videos. That takes like 10 seconds. Anyway, back to the phone. And the first reaction I've had when I've showed this to people, I've shown my wife and my brother so far, I hand it to them and they say, oh, that's a big phone. And oh, wow, look at that on the back. That really sticks out. Both of them said the exact same thing. Uh, that this camera bump here was, well, really, for lack of a better word, sticky outy. And I guess it is. I suppose I'm used to it coming from the S20 Ultra. So while I think it does look better, uh, this whole thing, especially in this Mystic Bronze, looks fantastic, I think. It really does protrude quite a bit, so I would recommend putting a case on this, also because it's a bloody big phone. 6.9 inches. Uh, I have reasonably big hands. I'm a six foot two guy, so I'm not a tiny person, uh, but I do struggle to hold this uh, and use it one-handed. So of course, it's a note. It's what the original phablets were, so you're going to have to probably use two hands with this, or indeed the S Pen, which is a staple of the Note series. One thing I've noticed, I keep pressing uh, the bottom right corner for the S Pen because that's where it's always been, but they've actually switched it now, so it's on the left side. We have the S Pen, which feels just the same as the last couple of years, and of course it matches the color of the phone you've gone with, so I have this very fancy Mystic Bronze. Also comes in Mystic Black, which just looks a bit boring, but also an interesting Mystic White, which I thought looked pretty good. But it's not just the screen size that makes this feel big. Because we have the squared off corners, it does make it feel a little bit bigger. And if you do hold it in a normal phone way, <laughs> at the bottom at least, it digs into your hand a little bit. So you kind of encouraged to hold it a little bit higher up. So yes, this is a big phone, but you probably knew that because it's a Note. Um, but just be prepared to probably put a case on it as well, because not only does the camera module protrude quite a bit, but it is quite slippery. And while we do have Gorilla Glass 7, which uh, they tell me is also known as Gorilla Glass Victus uh, on the front and the back, unlike the regular Note 20, which is still Gorilla Glass 5 and a slightly ugly glass stick design rather than this premium glass, so looking around the phone, on the bottom we have the USB-C port, a single speaker down here along with the S Pen. Then on the right side we have uh, the power and volume rocker. Nothing at all on the left side, so they've actually switched it as well uh, compared to last year's Note 10. On the top we have the SIM card tray with microSD support because it's the Ultra, uh, along with another speaker up here. So this does give you uh, AKG tuned, that's a tongue twister as well, uh, speakers. We do get stereo speakers on here. And then on the front we have this massive screen, uh, which is curved, the uh, Ultra gets a curved screen, the standard Note 20 is flat, so you may actually prefer that, I know some people do. And then this little, what as Samsung called, Infinity O design, this front uh, hole punch cutout. But it is pretty small and not too obtrusive. Now if you did watch my hands-on video from a couple of days ago, you know that I spent about a third of that ranting, well, explaining the issue around the processor uh, in here. Because of course in the UK and Europe we get the Exynos 990, Samsung's own processor, uh, whereas in North America and other territories they get the even faster Snapdragon 865 Plus. So the Exynos was already slow in the 865, and then rather than you know improving that or you know making it fair across all regions, they've just improved further the North American variant, which is disappointing because the Exynos version of the S20 series did give us worse performance, worse battery life, and uh, it actually affected the camera quality a bit as well. So I can't give you benchmarks or do side by sides just yet because of this uh, review embargo I'm under. But putting the processor stuff to one side for a second, this is still an incredibly fast phone. We get 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM. In here I have 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, although in the US it only comes with 128 gigabytes, uh, but both 
have a option of 512 gigs, plus you have that micro SD card support. So you can have up to 1.5 terabytes of storage if you just wanna go crazy. I mean, who knows? Maybe the reason we're getting uh, the 256 gig option here and not in the US is because they feel bad for us because we're the Exynos. Uh, so they're making us feel better with more storage. But the biggest difference to performance really is this new adaptive 120 hertz refresh screen because I mean, even the A65 Plus only adds sort of like five, 10 percent to the GPU uh, performance. It's not a huge upgrade. Of course, I'm still frustrated about it and we'll come back to it in the full review. Now you still can't have the WQHD Plus resolution and the 120 hertz at the same time. It is one or the other, just like the S20 series, which again is a bit frustrating because, you know, the Note series is, well, A, very expensive and kind of marketed as this sort of all singing, all dancing, ultimate flagship phone, but there's still this compromise there where you have to pick and choose. It's kind of like having, you know, the PS4 Pro or the Xbox uh, One X where you could either go for performance or graphics preset. But even at 10TP, I can barely make out pixels. It still looks fantastic. And there's a lot more to the screen than just the resolution because these Samsung screens are uh, consistently among the best on the market in terms of uh, color accuracy, you know, blacks, brightness. This actually peaks at 1500 nits with HDR content. So it's the brightest phone ever, I believe. Now, importantly, it is adaptive refresh. So using uh, this fancy LPTO screen, it basically means that based on what's on the screen, it'll adapt the refresh rate because of course that's going to drain your battery and the S20 series, especially with the Exynos chip, were not fantastic for battery, even with the massive 5000 cell that we got in the S20 Ultra. In here we have 4500. So that is one of the things I was really worried about and I will continue to test over the next few days before my full review. But Samsung do say, that having this adaptive frame rate means that actually when you're just looking at an article or reading a web page, it'll go down to between one and 11 hertz because you're not really doing anything. If you're watching a movie or video, it'll go between 30 and 60 and gaming is 48 hertz and above. And they do say it should save a good chunk of battery. So that's something uh, I will test and will hopefully, hopefully offset the smaller battery size because of course they've had to cram in an S Pen into the body as well, so these physically couldn't fit that same 5,000 milliamp hour battery as we got on the S20 Ultra. Software-wise, we have Android 10 with Samsung's One UI 2.5 on top. And if you've used a Samsung phone for the past two or three years, this will feel pretty familiar to you. There's nothing really crazy here. I still really wish uh, we had the Google News feed to the side rather than Samsung's own op day sort of home screen thing. I feel like there's a joke to be made there around what's up day, not much you. <laughs> In my mind, it sounds like Updog. But really with the Note series, it's all about what you can do with the S Pen and all the software and little extras that they've added. Now, for me at least, the big upgrade with the S Pen is the reduced response time down to nine milliseconds. I think it was 40 something on the Note series last year. So as you write and doodle and draw and do your whatever it is you do with the S Pen, you just have that kind of like instant feedback, which really does make you feel like you're actually drawing something. They have also added new air actions, so you can do, well, I was gonna say shortcuts, but really, I don't know who actually wants to use it. You can just swipe back with your finger or the pen normally. You don't have to act like Harry Potter and do it three times because you didn't hold it quite in the right position. I find them incredibly gimmicky and to be honest, not something I would use in real life, but you don't have to use them. You can entirely turn them off if you want to. Now for me, I never use things like live messages or AR doodle or pen up, but I do find it useful for taking screenshots or even being able to draw out little sections to record video and then turn into GIFs. I know my friend Saf from Super Saf, uh, he loves this for doing some of his thumbnail photoshopping on the phone. I find it really useful if I want to take a picture, you can hold it further away and then use the little button on here as the camera shutter button. Or you know, you could put your phone way over there and then still take the picture remotely with this in your pocket or something or in your hand because it's quite subtle. So far so good then, but let's talk about this camera and first impressions, I'm actually really impressed with it. It's a very similar setup to the S20 Ultra, but they've made a few tweaks and I think made it a lot better. Firstly, you do notice the focusing. That was one of the issues on the S20 lineup. Uh, they had some sort of focusing issues and I do find now that it is absolutely instant. It really is quick and that's thanks to a new hybrid laser autofocus which is exclusive to the Ultra. The standard Note 20 doesn't get that. And also they've adjusted the space zoom. They've got rid of the 100 times space zoom option which was a bit ridiculous anyway and now it tops out at 50 times but it does look better than even the space zoom on the S20 because actually we're getting a five times optical zoom in here which is up from three times optical. One thing I would suggest though, if you buy the Note 20, is that you'll probably go into the camera app and be like, where are all the modes? But that's because for some reason they hide them under the more tab. So then you can go in here and then you can actually edit and drag them out onto the main camera carousel at the bottom for quicker access. 
And you have the usual live focus for portraits, night shots, and also the new pro video mode. So if you really want to, you can shoot in 8K in this, as well as in 21 by nine ultra wide, and also at 24 FPS for that cinematic look. And with the pro video mode, you can change all the settings, you know, exposure, lighting, focus, shutter speed, look at histograms for lighting, and also there's a whole bunch of new sound options in case you wanna plug in external mics connected via Bluetooth, and you can choose what audio sources you want. So if you are someone who takes a lot of video on their phone and maybe wants to get into the weeds a little bit more with the settings, then this is gonna be for you. I have to say though, one of the more impressive changes I think is the selfie camera. I need to spend some more time uh, with it and also do side-by-sides with the S20 and the Note 20, sorry, this is the Note 20, with the Note 10, because they've actually dropped the resolution. On the S20 Ultra, it was 40 megapixels, now it's 10. But first impressions at least, I really like the selfie camera on this. Unfortunately, I've been told I can't show you camera samples just yet. Some of the videos do show them, but apparently they shouldn't either. Samsung's rules are kind of vague annoyingly, but make sure you're subscribed for my full review where we'll have an in-depth look at the camera. But the question is, what phones would you like to see compared to this in a big camera comparison? Maybe like the iPhone 11 Pro Max, maybe the OnePlus 8, maybe the Huawei, the P40 Pro Plus perhaps. Let me know in the comments below what phones, what two other phones, because I have a little Trident 3 phone uh, contraption which I can use to take photos. Which two other phones you'd like to see compared against this in a big camera comparison? Let me know below and I'll take that on board and try and make that video. And finally, a quick word on battery life. Now I've only had a few days with it so far, but by midnight I pretty consistently have 22% of my battery left, which works out to be around four and a half hours of screen on time from this Exynos version of the Note 20 Ultra. I will try and get a Note 20 Ultra from the US, or at least uh, one of my friends, hopefully who can give me some of his data, and then compare Exynos versus Snapdragon and see which one lasts longer. Although at the end of the day, unless you're willing to ship a phone internationally, you don't really have much of a choice, so maybe it's a moot point anyway. But I'd like to cover it just for interest sake, and if we are indeed getting a bit screwed over here with the Exynos version, then it is good to know, and hopefully then that feedback perhaps Samsung will take on board. So we'll have to see. And there's also a few other extras like wireless deck support, so you no longer have to plug this in. If you are thinking about buying uh, the Note 20 Ultra and using it as like a bit of a productivity hub, I mean, this is a powerhouse of a phone, plus we have the S Pen, and with Dex, you can use it a bit like a desktop. And also we have this new ultra wide brand chip, or UWB, which right now doesn't really give you a ton of uh, bonuses unless you're transferring files to other UWB devices, in which case it should be a lot faster. Uh, but there are some interesting use cases like being able to unlock your car, but it will be interesting to see what developers can do with the ultra wideband technology in this. And altogether, as you'd expect for the price of this thing, it is a lovely phone. So stay tuned for my full review. Let me know what cameras you'd like me to test against this. And also if there's any other videos or any other questions you have about the Note 20 Ultra, I'll try and factor that into my review and also uh, reply to your comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you found this useful and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.